Hey, everybody, welcome to Salt Project Open Hour for Thursday, October 6th. Uh, glad to have everybody here. I am Chunga. I'm your Salt Community Manager, and Salt Project Community Manager, I should say, forgive me. Uh, and uh, and we're, uh, we're happy to have you here with us, uh, whether you're watching live or whether you're uh, checking us out on YouTube, on the Salt Project YouTube channel. Uh, we're grateful that you're here. Uh, Salt Project. Open hour, excuse me, Salt Project Open Hour uh, happens every first and third Thursday. Here's where you can find us in the meantime. Uh, you can find us again, like I said, on YouTube, also on GitHub, Slack, Twitch, Reddit, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and, uh, and you can also find us at the Hacks podcast. Um, all right, <clears throat> here's what we're going to be talking about today. We've got a general updates, uh, maybe a quick mention about, uh, about salt. 3003, uh, going to talk a little bit about salt pull requests, and uh, then we'll uh, chat and check in with our community forums with Tom Phipps. Thomas Phipps, yeah, Thomas, I'm so sorry. And um, and yeah, it's a little bit light today, forgive me. Uh, I'm just kidding, this is literally the first thing I'm doing back from vacation, just barely, barely back. Uh, as I was saying, open hour, first and third Thursday, 10 a.m. Uh, to 11 a.m. Pacific time, that's 11 to noon mountain time. Uh, again, a reminder for you: all of our uh, all of our times reflected on the saltproject.io community calendar are all Mountain Time. Just so you know, uh, we do that uh, primarily for the working groups, um, just so that everybody can know that that's where we that's uh, where we base everything is around Mountain Time. If you have any questions about that, just hit me on Slack. Uh, I did not update this slide. Forgive me. Our next Salt Project Open Hour. Uh, one second. <laughs> our next Salt Project Open Hour. Uh, <laughs> Oh man, it's on October twentieth. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. I Normally, I it. edit this slide for you, Chunga, but I forgot to look today. <laughs> oh, you too. I always okay, edit Chunga. it to update it. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Math is hard. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, uh, and I didn't know that you were doing that. I, I thought it was the little elves that came in to fix my shoes. Yeah, I do it every too. time, but I forgot this time. <laughs> Uh, all right, thanks. Oh, yeah, Chunga forgot to let it left leave a dish of milk out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, here I am thinking I'm all genius and stuff. Yeah, I, I'm on top of it. No, it's actually Elisa. Thank you. Um, all right, anyway, Salt version three thousand and three has entered extended life. I uh, that's uh, you know it ended in at the uh, just a few days ago. If you are a user currently. Uh, version 3003, you will not be receiving any more updates. Uh, please make a note of it, as the phone lady used to say back in the day. Uh, poll requests. I want to give a big shout out to Gareth Greenway and uh, Megan Wilhite and the entire Salt Core team. Uh, they're making some pretty serious headway with the uh, with the uh, poll requests. And personally, I want to say thank you uh, on behalf of the community. Fantastic. I was really excited to hear from Anil that uh, uh, we're pulling 60 plus Pull, we're, we're merging, excuse me, 60 plus pull requests per week. And the last week before I went on vacation, they had merged 73. So that number's a little bit inaccurate there. Uh, I'm sure it's much, much higher. Uh, I just didn't get a chance before I, I hopped in uh, to open our fresh back from vacation. So a uh, huge movement there. Fantastic. Thank you. A uh, round of applause for everybody that's, you know, that's, that's working on that, specifically Gareth and Megan. Uh, I couldn't be happier. Thank you very, very much. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's uh, hand it over to Thomas Phipps for uh, an update on what's happening in the community forums. Um, really, the only thing I saw that usually doesn't come up is um, somebody asking about setting up reactors to only fire off like once an hour, but since the triggers can come in from any number of sources, they wanted to do it in the reactor and not in the beacons um let them know hey best bet just let the reactor run but fire off an orchestration that actually does the top, the limiting because if you try to limit in the reactor and do something like pause it or anything like that you could cause all sorts of problems because the reactor the rendering of it is a blocking action on the event bus so if you have anything that slows down that rendering to the point where it can take, you know, even a second, 
it could cause the events to pile up to the point you're going to hit the high water marks and lose data basically so it's best to keep the reactor ginger as simple as possible and as fast as possible don't do things like file writing and reading or querying out to the minions because that's a timed process it could really slow down things if you need grains information either there's a setting that um you can set in a minion and it'll send the grain data with the event so the event data will have the grains or get the grains data from the cache instead of trying to query for it from the minion but basically try to keep the reactors short sweet and to the point um and also remember if the reactor a reactor that uh, renders out to a blank file is completely fine it's the only system in salt that you can do that to so if it renders out to there's no state in it it'll just go okay i guess i got nothing to do and it won't throw an error you know orchestration you do that it'll blow up states i'm sure we've all seen the errors it throws when you end up with a state file that doesn't have any states in it but reactor it's meant to do it so perfectly fine to have your reactors render to nothingness and that's pretty much all i got to say on that all right, fantastic. Thank you, sir. Um, always, always awesome uh, to hear from Thomas Swift. Appreciate the help, man. Um, okay, big part of the uh, big part of open hour Q and A. Uh, I call it Nick time. Um, I don't know. Gary uh, has been. Uh, I mean, he may be making a run. It may become Gary time. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not quite ready to pull the trigger on that, but you never know. So, uh, do we have any questions today? I do. Ah, see, there you go. Go for it. Uh, so I see in um, 3005 that the uh, etcd uh, version 2 API has been deprecated for the release notes, but it doesn't say what, when, like, when it will no longer, which release will no longer be supported in, nor um, has any of the documentation, with the exception of the release notes, been updated to include that information. Do we have, can you provide some guidance on that? I don't know if we, well, haven't seen the, any specifics. Um, I know that, I know that the big reason we did that in the first place is because etcd itself has like dropped most, any support that, that at least that I'm aware of for version two, it's been, um, years since they've had any releases uh, on version two of their API uh, and version three, I guess, is their their way of the future. Um, so we finally even supported that, uh, which is, I, th I think, a good thing. And I know probably a few people have been looking forward to that. Um, but uh, as far as a specific date, I don't know if there's one in the code. I haven't, uh, haven't looked in a while. Um, but typically the um our deprecation process is that we have uh no n no shorter than a year um to uh for things to to live before we go ahead and pop them on the head and and get them out so um with that it would be what uh october September of 2023 is when we would officially cease life support for etcd version 2 API. Um, but I, I don't know if we have any specific plans there around actually tearing all of the, the version 2 support out yet. So what if you create the code, it says Argon 2008. Okay. Is that, I think you worked on that, right, Caleb? Yeah, I was just looking for the the line I put in. It is argon, yes. Yeah. 
So oh, just 2008. Two yeah, releases two, from the next three one. Three releases, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I looked through the pull request. I didn't see any reference, and I pulled up the docs real quick, but... Uh, All right, thank you. Okay, that's yeah. I think I, you know, I figured it was probably going to be at least three thousand seven, three thousand eight. Yeah, like that's that's fine by me. I was just, yeah, I didn't see, I didn't see reference to it in the release notes, and I didn't see any specific documentation in, in any of the modules saying it was deprecated as of you know X release. Yeah, all, all the deprecation actually occurs in the util, and we don't produce docs for our utils, so that's why it doesn't show mm -hmm. up anywhere. That makes sense. Gotcha. Probably would be a good thing, just like mental note, maybe Caleb, since you did the work, um, just something to think about, something to, to include for the release notes for 3006 is the, the deprecation, even if it's in utils, um, just something we should call out specifically. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Maybe it's something we can change. I mean, because if you look at the deprecated uh, change log, none of the deprecations call out which release it's deprecated in. Um, so maybe that's something we can be cognitive of going forward when we're reviewing PRs, if something's getting deprecated to include the, the release that it will be deprecated in so it's easy. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea too for anyone like Gary who's following the, the pull requests. <laughs> Okay, anyone else? That can't be the only question. <laughs> no, I, I was deferring to Gary. I was gonna see if there's anything <laughs> else. Um, so I just have one thing. Um, so pull request 62717, um, just put a link in chat. Uh, I need help from somebody that has access to like, uh, a Mac testing apparatus for interactive testing or somebody who might know why this particular test might be failing. Um, I can't think of any reason that Mac specifically would take so much longer than every other test. This particular uh, test that it's failing on is like a time-based one. It needs to um, succeed in less than 30 seconds for uh, spawning platforms that are not Mac and less than 45 seconds for spawning platforms that are Mac. Um, every other platform is getting through it in less than 30 seconds, but for whatever reason, um, after the changes that I made, uh, which shouldn't be Mac specific in any way, um, it's taking like 340 seconds. Um, which is a, a huge swing. Um, and I can't find anything that, that I did specifically that would have exacerbated any uh, Mac testing. So um, this is my call for, for help because uh, I, I don't really have a great way to test it, right? Like, you know, every other platform, I'll generally spin something up and try and run it interactively to see what exactly is going on. Uh, but I don't have a great way to do that for Mac. So just to be clear, it's, like the, I, I was just looking at the test results um, for your PR, and it's the two tests that are failing. They're not ones that you added, correct? Correct. But the change that you made is causing these ones to fail, seemingly. Yes. Okay. So one thing I did is the last test run, I did a full test run. Um. And that isn't failing that test that mm -hmm. is failing when it's just, you know, the fast test, which is only 30 minute test run. I did that because sometimes that when you combine, no sense. It, it, <laughs> okay. so what happens is Unless sometimes there's, there's issues in the, in the test that, that you only notice failing it. Right. Yeah. There's only sometimes things become aware of issues in the test suite when only certain combination of tests are run. And sometimes that only happens on certain PRs because we have logic that chooses which tests to run. Um, and it seems like that is actually what's going on. Uh, so I don't think your PR is causing any legitimate test failures. 
Um, and then the two tests that are failing on the full test run are also failing on the branch tests. Um, so I think the right approach here is for us to clean those tests up and then do a full test run again, in my opinion. That seems accurate to me as well. If we've got them failing on our branch tests, we need to fix that and get those green so that we can actually run <laughs> correct tests or passing tests <laughs> um, against this PR. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree with Megan. Cool. Yeah, I'll get those prioritized to get fixed. Thank Thanks. you very much. Okay, anyone else? That may be the lightest Q&A we've ever had. I guess problems only happen when you're in town, Chunga. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I sure. Uh, okay, so let's see. Probably make that uh, I got one quick other one. Uh, there was going to be a, a Q and A on Wonder, and then it got rescheduled a couple of times. Do we have a new date for that one yet? Uh, yeah. So I reached out to uh, the guy that's going to be doing that, the core team uh, pro that's going to be doing that. This guy, uh, D Was, so Daniel Wozniak, and um, yes, the plan is still very much to do that. Um, some of you will remember last open hour that uh, that there was a. Uh, a bit of an emergency that arose and, and we were not able to do that. So uh, I did hit up Dwaz uh, while I was on break or while I was on my vacation, uh, weren't able to sync up and, and make that happen. So we will definitely have the Wonder Tiamat discussion uh, coming up. Um, I'm, I'm assuming next open hour. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll hit him up again. Yeah, let's do it next open hour. Okay, great. Awesome. And apologies for that. That's, uh, I mean, it was all set up and good to go. The last open hour just didn't, you know, stuff happens as they say. <laughs> um, any other, any other uh, questions for a Q and A? No? All right, well, easy breezy. Again, we will see you on uh, October 20th. Thank you, Elisa, for the next, uh, for the next Salt Project open hour, be sure to be checking back to our YouTube channel, Salt Project YouTube channel. And, uh, and you can always hit me on Slack uh, if you have any issues related to, uh, to finding this on open hour. And uh, yeah, I, you get the drill. So um, with that said, I think we're going to finish it off as we always do, handing it over to one Mr. Wayne Warner. So I, I can't remember if I've told this on open hour, but uh, in the... Uh, I guess they're actually quiet right now, um, but uh, my my wife has some uh, some parakeets, and uh, D David asked a question <laughs> of me earlier this week, and so I thought this would be just just perfect. So uh, there are these two guys standing up on the top of a cliff, and one of them had some small, brightly colored birds on their arms and a the other one had some slightly larger, but also brightly colored birds on their arms. And they they both jump off the cliff at the same time. And the one of them pulls out a gun and tries to shoot the bigger birds, but completely misses. And they both plummet to the ground and are just laying there groaning and moaning, oh, oh. And the one turns to the other and says, you know, I don't care so much about this budgie jumping. The other guy says, yeah, and parrot shooting is not all it's cracked up to be. That may be the worst one you've done. <laughs> all right, very good. Thanks everybody for checking in. Uh, we'll see you. We'll see you for the next open hour. And uh, be sure to check back to saltproject.io for your working groups. Everybody go join a working group if you're watching this via YouTube. We'd love it. Uh, thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.